Hello, everybody, and welcome. It's just about our start time. My name is Zach Taylor. I'm the Digital Lab and Online Learning Manager here at SFW. If you're seeing me, seeing the screen, and we're hearing the music, you're all set to go. One final reminder before we get started here that if any portion of your screen is cropped, at the top of your monitor, there is a View Options button. There, you can select the ratio to be fit to screen. That way, nothing is cropped on your end. At this time, it is our start time, so I would like to go ahead and invite in Reed Callanan to get the program started. Reed. Thank you, Zach. Welcome. Thank you all for joining us as creativity continues at Santa Fe Workshops. My name is Reed Callanan, and on behalf of everybody at Santa Fe Workshops, I thank you for joining us tonight as we reveal the 20 images that Lori Klein has chosen as the, the best, her favorite um, 20 images she wants to share and talk about with all of you from our most recent assignment for Creativity Continues. Just to give you some background, uh, once a quarter, we run an assignment through our community and um, then you submit images based on that theme and we pass those images on to one of our great guest instructors and they choose 20 images, and then we uh, reveal those 20 uh, on one of these evening presentations. So about a month ago, we decided that the theme transitions would be a really appropriate one for this fall. And we chose the evening after the election day, because we figured we're gonna be in big transitions on Wednesday evening. And sure enough, here we are, major transition going on. And we also thought that it would be a nice time just to move away from the news and get into photography and listen to Laurie talk about uh, images and, and how good images are made. So it's, it's a nice respite from the intensity of the last couple of days and actually <laughs> the last couple of months. Um, so I'm pleased that you all are joining us and um, the format tonight is that Lori is going to present the 20 images and talk about them. And then after that, we're gonna have a little bit of time for question and answers from you. So at the bottom of your Zoom screen, there is a Q&A symbol. And that's where we'd like you to, to type in your questions for Lori. There's also a chat feature down there. And that chat room is really for you to make comments about the pictures or ask questions of Zach if you're having technical issues or you want to say something to the group. But for questions, please only use the Q&A feature. So um, Zach and I are going to go through those and we'll take turns asking Lori questions when that time arrives. So Lori Klein was um, our first choice to judge this um, assignment because she's just great at looking at images, critiquing images, talking about images. She's very, very verbal, which you're about to find out for sure. Uh, she comes with this wonderful pedigree of photographic background. She started studying photography with Ansel Adams. How many people can say that? And then she went to RIT where she got her BFA. Then she went to Ohio University where she got her MFA. So doesn't get much better than that in terms of background to get you started as a photographer. And she specialized and still does specialize in infrared photography, but that's just a, a small part of what Lori does as a photographer. We first became aware of Lori in 2013, when a great friend of ours, Tony Corbell, recommended to me that I should take a look at Lori Klein and her images. And I did, and immediately said, we wanna, we wanna work with this woman. She's got amazing work. And we've heard great things about her from some of our friends, Julianne Cost being one of those friends. And so um, I emailed Laurie and we basically decided that she was gonna teach an infrared class in the summer of 2014. And she's taught every year since, sometimes infrared, sometimes figure study. She's got a new workshop that we're doing online um, that we'll announce at the end of the, of the evening tonight. So you can see uh, kind of what she's got planned for an online program. So anyway, I'd like to bring Lori on board here now and um, introduce her to you and then turn the reins over to her. But um, Lori, it's, it's great to have you here. Thank you for agreeing to do this. Thank you for joining us. Uh, it's always a pleasure to work with you. So great to see you. You look great. 
Oh, thanks, Reed. It's so nice to be here. And I love the sunset behind you. <laughs> white sands. This is a white sands backdrop, and I figure it was an appropriate one for, um, for this evening. Absolutely. So, um, in our transitions, right? We are all in transitions. And so um, I'll let you give some opening remarks here about um, the images, and then, and then Zach will launch the, uh, the 20 images, and you can talk about them. And I'll come back and see you whenever, however long it takes you to, to go through these 20. But I'm looking forward to seeing them. And most of all, looking forward to having you talk about why you chose these images and what you think they say. So I will bow out now and I'll come back in a little bit. Okay, thank you, Reed. It's nice to be here. Um, hi, everybody. Um, I wish I could see everybody, but that's not happening tonight. Um, I was really honored to be asked to uh, to talk tonight and look at the work that was going to be submitted. And it's funny because transitions is such a huge word and a way to describe what's happening right now. Um, and just a little background of what's happened for me is that I'm usually on the road every month um, teaching or traveling and photographing and obviously everything got canceled and so I had to figure out what I was going to do and um, I still wanted to, sh to teach. I love teaching. Um, I've been teaching, you know, since I was in grad school and what I was finding is that my students um, and other photographers, they were just looking for something to do. They were like, what are we going to do? Where are we going to go? Um, we didn't even know what we wanted to shoot. So it was such a time of transitions. Um, and I think that that's been um, an incredible opportunity for people because people are going deep. So I have a huge following. Like when I teach at um, Santa Fe, it's like it's I get such a high repeat. And um, so I know everyone's work. And so now what's happening is that we're transitioning because we're having different feelings and we're experiencing the world, you know, in a different way. And we don't really always know what's what's real. You know, they, I feel like there's a veil in the world. So um, when Reed reached out to me and said, uh, would I talk on the topic of transitions? I said, yeah, because we are now being much more vulnerable. The images that were sent to me were just amazing um, and uh, heartfelt. Um, I am really, it was really tough for me to call it down to 20. I mean, really poor Zach. It's like, oh, Zach, I'm just, I don't know how to do this because there were so many really, really wonderful images. And so what I, what I just really appreciate is that people are going deep. They're trying things that are different. And also they're using the feelings. We don't always do this, but they're using the feelings that they have, that you have in order to express themselves through photography. And um, uh, one of my sons is a photographer and the other one is a, um, a doctor. And we do a a lot of the doctor uh, one and, and I do a lot of workshops on how creating makes a difference, how it is healing. And so I uh, kudos to all of you to be making art because it's a way for us to maneuver, to bring good stuff into the world and also to heal from a lot of the things that we're going through. Um, so like I said, it was really difficult to choose. Um, I feel like I curated it and what I, what, what I was trying to do was, you know, it wasn't best on, be, based on what was the best, it was what would meld together or maybe to be able to talk about different aspects of transition. So I am all set, Zach. Um, so Cindy, um, and I, I don't know who's in uh, the room, but um, this image to me was like a dance. And it was like death and new beginnings. And again, that's transitions. Um, you know, is it transitioning one way or the other? And that's the other thing that we feel is that, you know, things got better um, with COVID and then all of a sudden things are, you know, kind of dying again or they're shriveling again. So I thought this was a really uh, great representation. Plus the one, the, 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 the flower that is dying a bit, um, you know, it's turning on itself. And it has that feeling of this red dress and she's kind of being swallowed up. So I found most of the images that I did select were very metaphoric. And this one totally is because it, you know, there's so many stories that we can read into and there's so many feelings that we can have. And it, the simplicity of it with the white background was just really, really lovely. Okay, Zach, I'm ready. 
Um, so this was the first one that I saw and Marianne, this was really, uh, you know, I had to look at it for a while because it told so many stories and I, I wanted to see this girl, but I feel felt like she didn't know, you know, she transit transitioning in order to, you know, kind of like separate herself you know she's in back of an amaryllis and um you know that's a beautiful flower but you know she's got the hands the fingers and it's the same shape as the uh amaryllis is and the, um, the leaves are and so with her head kind of turned to the side there just feels like there's some stress and you know where is she transitioning from or to and that was another thing that i thought was really interesting are you transitioning to someplace or have you been transitioned and i think that that's something that has been happening a lot lately um and the other thing is is that i think that it's hard to make beautiful these days because we are feeling beautiful but there's also another story that is trying to be told and this is um this is a really good example of that okay zach oh well you know i looked at this picture for a really long time and there's so much about this that is quirky and you know the different colors and the brightness and the cat in the back was like in control. Like the cat in the back, just, I felt like, it, you know, with its little tongue that it had a conversation that it wanted to have with me. And so I felt like, you know, is he moving in? Is he moving out? Is he in transition? Is he living there or isn't he? And I don't really know what that bag is, um, what that, you know, what the name of that um, uh, probably fast food place or if it's, you know, I don't know That's, what that is. It's in and out Burger. It's oh, Cali a California place. Oh, I got it. And so obviously you just go in and out and you get the burger. So right. I, I thought that was just really fun because he's all, you know, he's, he's in his jacket. He's just come back probably from the, um, from the burger place. So it told a lot of stories and I, I particularly like images that don't tell me everything that leave some up to the imagination so I can start telling stories. I always think that that's a successful part of an image working. And this one really doesn't. And just nothing matches. Like you've got plaid, you've got this, um, you know, this cover for the couch. And then you've got these two, you know, the cat and then the man. It was just a very interesting image that um, told a lot of different stories. Okay, Zach. And then this one is how I feel just about every night. I live in a city and it's like, what is real? Um, and, you know, are we transitioning? Is, is, the, is the light like on fire? Is it, you know, uh, dancing? Because it looks like it's trying to tell us something. I mean, I was thinking about the music that, um, that was chosen tonight while we were in the waiting room. And I felt kind of like that. It, it's musical. And yet there's fog. Isn't it going to engulf it? And because we have so many questions because we don't know what's real. We don't know what's going to happen. And that one building on the right is leaning. And so is it going to crash? So there's so much static and I'm an empath and I'm sure a lot of you are. And so I can wake up in the morning and just feel energy that's going on around me. And that's a whole transitional thing too. And I felt that this image really represented that. So it's um, dark and gloomy. And yet there is this really cool design going on with the lights. Okay, Zach. And then this one was just layers. Um, and I went back and forth on this image and then the wine glasses just kept popping up like the wine glasses between his head. His head was be between the wine glasses rather. He's smoking a cigarette. There's this woman that looks like she's very much going inside. It, it feels kind of like meditative. And then the other glass of two glasses of wine on the left. And um, one looks like it has a face in it. And there's just so much going on. And then this guy who just seems to be oblivious to everything and he's smoking a cigarette. And I'm like, okay, well, that's also another juxtaposition where, you know, we're trying to heal and he's smoking a cigarette. So there's a real dichotomy to it. And it was just, it's a very quirky images that tells, has a lot of layers, which again, I feel is very uh, apropos with transitions. So it was an interesting image, Charles. Um, so some of you know me, some of my students are here tonight. Um, and um, infrared is, you know, um, what I teach at Santa Fe in the female form. And so when COVID happened, um, I stopped shooting infrared. Um, I picked it up a little bit, but this is something I've been doing for almost 40 years. 
um, because I couldn't make pretty. And I just couldn't make pretty. And to me, infrared is pretty, but it's also timeless and it has a lot of other feelings. And this image works for me in terms of transition because I think part of it is we want to transition back to beauty, beauty and to um, you know the future. And her eyes are closed. So there's it has possibilities and a lot of uh, the transitions that I have been going through, and I think most of my students and other people that have talked to me are not, not for hopeful to the future. And this one is because she's in the, um, you know, the window, I, you don't know really what that is, whether it's a window or a door. And so her back is to the dark and the unknown, and she's looking maybe to the sun. So there's a lot to read into it of possibilities and transitioning into the future. And the way that line of the wall just is such a lovely diagonal. Um, and uh, I, I thought it was also, um, when I was looking at the pictures, I didn't want to have the same theme going on. So I thought this was something that was really different than anything else that we were seeing, but also a different way to approach transitions or transitioning even. Um, this picture is mesmerizing. It's um, fascinating. Um, it tells, you know, I can read a story. Did she just cut her hair? What is she doing? And just the lighting on her face and her hands um, and the way she's she's kind of posed is almost like a mannequin, like she's frozen in space. And then I keep looking at those green things behind her and they look like trees that, again, it's, you know, it's all interpretive. And it's like, they're just popping up and um, like, maybe something's gonna grow. Did her hair grow? So it's, it's to me kind of, it's not kind of, it's surreal. It has a bit of fantasy. The lighting really makes it because of, you know, just her skin tones. And usually I do not um, like, or, or it doesn't work for me to have a line going across her, uh, you know, behind somebody because it kind of breaks the line. But in this case, it really works, especially because there are those vertical, uh, the vertical lines behind her, but it's cutting her. And I think that adds to the story because we don't really know, is she a mannequin, which we know she isn't, but what's the story? And so is she transitioning to something or from, from something? And I thought, um, I love it when images ask questions and you're curious. I'm curious about this image. And um, I think that that's, that holds true for any image that we create. Okay, Zach. Okay. I just had to put this in because this has such levity and um, it does have meaning. It's it's not usually an image that I'm drawn to, but you know, as you got the tadpole and it keeps getting bigger and bigger into the frog. And then that middle, that next one, I'm not sure if those are the eggs or was it left there for possibilities? So again, it asked questions. So I, I really love when a photographer, um, allows you to come into the image, allows you and actually asks of you, come on into my image and like kind of dance and play with me and you figure out what's going on. I don't want, I don't want them to tell me everything. And this is just, I, you know, and that's the other thing in this time of transitions, I need some levity because sometimes I take myself really seriously as we all do um, because we just don't know. So thanks for the entertainment, Judy. Um, Abby, this is a fascinating image. You know, when I first saw it, I'm like, oh, why is the rocks right at her face? And then the more I looked at it, because it stops me, you've got all these circles and you've got, you know, these designs and then this dress or whatever she's wearing with her fingers out. Um, but I realized that it's right almost where the mouth is. And so can, during a time of transitions, can we speak what's gonna come out? And there's this ring, this this circle, you know, and uh, this is what I'm reading into it. I'm sure you all um, probably are reading something else into it. You know, you could be, um, and everything in this image is for a reason. And that she's, you know, kind of posed and has an attitude. And yet, what is she looking at? Is that the future? Is that, you know, so again, it has, it asks a lot of questions, which I think is really fascinating. Okay. This seems to be suspended in time where it's got, you know, icons from past art. And then it's got, you know, writing on it and um, hours. And, you know, I'm not sure what the rest is. Um, I might be missing something there, but I just thought it was, uh, you know, it was a really interesting way to um, uh, 
to tell a story, you know, and the finger pointing and, you know, it's, it, it, it's very much um, Romanesque. Um, and it has, I, I feel like time is compressed here where we have words and we've got something that could have been in the Sistine Chapel or, you know, other places. And yet, you know, maybe there's graffiti on it. So there was a lot, I tried to like figure all this out and I said, nope, that's what this is about. It's like, we don't know where, you know, again, it's a transition where the right side is darker and then the left side has the, you know, the sun. And I think it's full of possibilities. And I felt that that um, really kind of resonated for me on what was going on right now. So this, this is fascinating image, uh, Mary. Um, it's very dreamlike, it's very ethereal. Um, the two, I have to put my glasses on again, um, the two windows. Um, and, you know, sometimes, you know, when I was looking at it um, this week, I saw two faces in there, but also um, up on, I don't know, Zach, can, can they see my, my uh, cursor? Oh, you got it. They can see mine. Okay, so you see there's like a face on the right? Kind of in here? Yeah, well, no, it's right in where the leaves are. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So there was a face there. So I kept like, well, am I trying to make that up? So again, when an image pulls me in and it, it's making me kind of think and feel and like be a little, uh, a little uncomfortable. And I felt like this image did that. And, but it was very, very intriguing um, because of the layers. And then you've got this bush on the front and, you know, it's just kind of suspended. And again, I think it has a lot of opportunities for um, interpretation. And did the top square come out transition away from the back square, you know, and then you've got the repetition of those two windows with the kind of uh, bluish, you know, um, I, Mary, I hope at the end, you could kind of like, I, I don't know that I really want to know what this is, because I like my interpretation. And I kind of like when we have the opportunity to read our own stories in it. But what's real, what isn't, and I have a tendency to see a lot of faces in work. Um, and I also, on the right um, square, I see a mouth down on the bottom and like eyes that are just coming off the page. Yeah, Zach, you got that right. So it's, it's just, it's one of those images like, you know, and there's tension. It's like, oh, I want to push it down and yet it's going to separate out again. And I think when, uh, again, when uh, it's just curious, I'm just really curious about that Im this image. And I really don't know that I want to know what the photographer's, you know, view was of this. And because um, I think I think successful images are ones that, you know, the artist puts the right amount in and leaves the right amount out. And then you can pull your own stories into it and get involved. So that was why I picked this image. Okay. And then this one, I kept coming back with this because I was having a really big issue with scale. And it was like all this stuff going on. And again, I, I'm in a place right now where I've lost, I've lost a sense of scale. Like, you know, the pandemic is huge. That's a huge scale. And yet you've got all these small things. And, and you know, and then I think, well, is that fire hydrant real or is it a toy? You know, I don't think it was a toy because it looks like that's a side of a wall. But, and then they've got these black things that are going on. So um, I... I just couldn't figure out what was going on. So, but it was really fascinating and the negative positive space was um, very um, enticing. So I, I don't think that's Mary's because the one before was Mary. So I don't yeah, know. It looks like we have a typo. So I'll fix that before we post it. I apologize to whoever said that. That's okay. But I just want to give that, that person credit. So it's, also, it, it, it's Lisa's picture. Okay. Um, so uh, the other thing is with the scale is, a, you know, you've got, you've got such negative, positive figure ground kind of thing going on and you've got the shadow of the tree and then something on the right and then these blocking things. So that's kind of where, you know, I feel days um, that I can see, uh, you know, you want to go see in the future and then there's a wall, you know, and you don't know the size of things because things are, you know, we're experiencing things that we have never, ever experienced before. So, okay, next. Oops. Um, so Linda, this image, the, the tonalities in here, 
um, are just fascinating. Um, they're warm, but they're also haunting. The figure reaching out, I figure there's another figure back there, that's what they're reaching out for. And I feel too with transitions is that we're often trying to reach for something that is out of sight and it's not in focus. And that's, I think one of the real strengths of this image too, is that it's not in focus. And yet there seems to be a somewhat of a pathway and there's a lot of layers and it may be through a, um, a drape or something, I don't know, but it's a very, and it's a very simple image. And I think it's really cool, Zach, how I, I figure you kind of put them together, how the last one was next to this one, because the last one was so busy and so textural. And then this one is just so, I mean, it's just, it's right in your face and you know, you want to reach out, you feel that arm going out. So, okay. Um, you know, this, to me, this is kind of iconic of um, images that we're seeing, but there was something about this where this kid was looking up, his mask went down under his nose, the girl behind didn't have a mask on, and then the his shirt, which says can't breathe, which is I imagine, and then the sheriff. So there's all these little vignettes, I think it works really great um, in, uh, in a square format. And again, it's transitions because, you know, there's so much going on that we, we don't know what's real. And, you know, what is he saying? Is he looking up to him? So there's a lot of stories um, that Cynthia has in this image. And um, again, I could make up the stories. And I'm sure, you know, I, if a young kid looked at this photograph, they would see something totally different. But it just, it has a lot packed into us, you know, and especially where the gun is kind of facing the can't breathe. So there's a lot of um, symbolism going on in this image. Okay, next. So this one, and I, I don't know, and I don't need to know Veronica, but, um, um, initially, when I looked at this image, it looked like that was a negative. Um, I guess we don't call it negative so much as inverse, um, an inversion where it looks like, you know, that, you know, the, the, the grass is from a negative and oh, it is a negative. And so I thought that that was very haunting. And then you have, it looks like almost the fires that, you know, was happening on the West Coast. And um, just that one little tree coming up, but it was all barren. So again, you know, do we transition from the barrenness in the foreground to the smoke or to the mountains or to the, you know, the you know, I, I don't know that it's scope uh, snow smoke. It could also just be that that's kind of the future of, you know, we need to get through those clouds in order to get to um, where we need to go next. And I think that that's, this is, it's to me, especially being an infrared shooter, um, we, we photograph in the non-visible um, spectrum. And so to me, this is like invisible to visible. And again, it's very simple. This image, I, I you know, I couldn't do it when I was looking at the pictures. I, I probably could have, but I didn't figure it out how to put this upside down because this image would work really well, even upside down. And we always know if, if an image is strong, it works upside down and every other different way. And you know, the composition works well. Okay, Zach. Uh, this was, this to me was levity, um, you know, just having the bright colors and also what the story is, you know, we're, we're just seeing, you know, I'm not seeing I can't go to a beach. I'm not seeing somebody on a beach with this, you know, and this bright, happy um, painting. Um, but also because it's on an angle, that's what really makes it for me on this image because it's not horizontal. It's not mimicking those horizontal lines. And we know that diagonal lines are really that nest shaped, shape. So the strongest um, uh, elements of composition. And so it's leading, it's leading us up. And I think too, with transitions, when we think we're leading up, it's hopefulness. And to me, this image is a transition of hopeful, hopefulness. And that was one of the big reasons that I picked this and that he's all in white, I assume he's a guy, but she just looks so happy. Like I wanna know her and the painting is bright. The other thing is, is that this is a composition that is a little quirky in that usually with something like that, when, when somebody is walking and um, you wanna give them space to where they're walking to. And John picked it where he was, you know, 
this man is on the, you know, the right hand side where there isn't that much space. So he's going to walk out. So it was all what was behind him. So whether you did this on purpose or not, but this is what happens compositionally is that there's a lot of stories behind. And that's why there's so much space back there. And then here he is, you know, almost off the, you know, the edge of the image. And, um, so moving into another realm, another transition, you know, whatever our interpretation is. So, okay, Zach. So I looked at this quite a while um, and it's really fascinating, Douglas or Doug, um, because what really makes it for me is, it's like, um, I, I don't know what it's called, but in Zen, they have this thing that hangs and it's like a pendulum and it makes you, you move it around and it makes all these designs. And I feel like this is trying to give me a message. And the big thing that really was, um, I really enjoyed was that it looked like, I don't know how this was done, but how the leaf looked like it was pulled through the sand, which I feel it was the sand, but it doesn't have to be. It, probably isn't and it's making it's almost like um cutting through skin because it's almost the same tonality as skin and it's those cuts and then are those cuts stitched up so it asks a lot of questions and i don't know that i want to you know I, I i also just the design is amazing um and i don't want to get into it too deep because i just think it's really fascinating and again with, especially with transitions because you know we can all look at the same transition or, or experience it and come up with different um metaphors or feelings and then again those dark lines so it has a real zen quality to it and yet there's some disturbing pieces to it so um this image really worked for me on that level so um and then this one uh i kept going back to it it's just uh, it's I don't, I don't even know what to say um i think this is a hard one to describe i feel there's a lot of movement and yet there's such stillness and then the mirror and you know what's going on and there's so much room for interpretation but it is and you know in the mask and we don't really see the max on the person on the floor, but we know it's the mask and, you know, with the, with the kind of the nose or the beak coming down um, because of, you know, what we're seeing as the reflection um, and the shadows. And I think the shadows really make it. And, and then it questions, what is that guy standing against the wall? So there's so many questions in this image. And also um, it looks almost like two figures are being in that circle um you know in the middle and then again the shapes on the floor so it's all about shapes and this is a really interesting image too to look upside down because the way the composition is and it's very stark and um to me this transition is a little disturbing because i don't know what's going on and i feel tension yet i don't so there's a lot of con conflicting Im uh, feelings that i have when i look at an image um, like this. And I think that that's what makes a lot of images successful is when they, again, require us to become a part of it and to interpret it um, in from our own uh, path. So, okay. Um, I just think this is what we feel like, you know, sometimes there are days that I just, um, you know, I'll sit in one spot and then I'll sit in another spot and then I'll stand up. And I thought it was cool where the guy's eyes, you know, his top of his head has just disappeared. And then the blinds almost look like they've reversed into a negative and you've got a lot of horizontal lines and some pictures on the bottom. So, you know, is he transitioning from standing up to sitting down? And, you know, it just feels like every day sometimes these days is the same. Um, and we're locked in our homes and, um, but we're trying to transition and sometimes going inward, which is what he might be doing is the way that we um, transition. So again, there was a lot of hefty, I mean, sometimes I try to read too much into things, but that also is a compliment to um, the photographer because it asks questions. Um, and I don't, you know, I, and then the pillows down and it, things are a little bit messy and then he's still up there. So it's, it's a, it's a fascinating image. Okay. Um, and then this one, it just, the simplicity of it, 
And yet it just said everything like, which way are we supposed to go? Um, if we're going to transition into the winter, or if we're going to transition to another bad spell of COVID, I live in the Northeast and, you know, we can't be outside again soon because, you know, as much as we were. And, um, you know, so this kind of really, for me, um, uh, Mitchell, is that it really kind of resonated to transitions that I'm having. You know, the lights can be, you know, they're warm lights, so they're kind of fiery. And so there are possibilities, but it just feels like we're just going around in a circle and, you know, that middle sign, you know, of the yield and the walk. And, you know, so I start thinking about, is it a schoolyard, but which way do we go? We don't have a, a direction and that's usually something and that's what really drew me to this is that usually when we transition we have some glimpse of where we're transitioning to and we don't with this image and then the only up there and then only go this way but then the lines are going other ways so it, it to me this is kind of like a mind game so okay oh geez did i go too fast or are we good we are good. All right. You went, you went, you spoke fast, but you gave great comments. And um, that was fun. It, it's so, so interesting and nice to just sit back and look at pictures and hear you talk about pictures. And I've been doing a lot of teaching myself these last four or five months. And so it's nice to have somebody else talk about pictures and just sit back and enjoy it. So that was really fun for me, Laurie. So. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you for the comments. And um, okay, so we, for... I have to make a little plug to you. I um, I know quite a few people that are taking your class. Um, what's it? Home um... Homescapes, a new paradigm. Oh my God, they are loving this class. Oh, good. Oh yeah. So um, you're. I mean, to to see how you're helping people on so many different ways, and not just you know through the work, you know through um, Santa Fe Photographic Workshops, but also what you're doing as an educator and and what you're giving them has just been really great. So um, that's from you know this is just what I'm hearing from people. So it's well, really that's nice. Thank you so much. And I, I love teaching, and this class is like the perfect class for right now. It's called Homescapes, and that's where we are. And so it's, it's investigating what home means mm -hmm. to all of us. And it means different things for different people. And um, home is metaphor and home is memory. And so it's been just so much fun to teach it that mm -hmm. um, it's nice to hear that people have enjoyed it. Oh, very much so. And, and, and they're going deeper. And I think too, with, you know, um, having the word transition, which is a big word for me and, you know, do and curating this work, um, is that there were there there were homescapes? You know, some some of the images were in home. We don't know if that's where they live, but again, it's it's what is home right now? And it could be you know if we're walking a certain place. You know, I I, I live in Providence. I don't live far from you, and um, sometimes I go the same road just to go for a walk. But it's like the that 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 street is becoming my home because I can't go see my kids. So it's very interesting when we take these feelings and we direct them into our image making. Mm -hmm. Yep, I agree. I agree. So I'll start off with um, we don't. Oh, a question popped up there, Zach. But I have one. Actually, this was sent by Paul and he emailed it to us in advance because he was so anxious to ask you a question. So this is from Paul. He's got two questions and they're both kind of interesting. Um, the first one is what catches your eye? Um, so <laughs> <laughs> Good luck with that <laughs> <laughs> um, You know, I look for, okay, so my career is over 50 years. Um, being a photographer. So um, I look for stories. Mm -hmm. um, I also look for images that um, ask me, the viewer, um, to participate. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to, and, and you notice very few of the images that I picked um, told everything, told the complete story. Because then I, I almost think, um, and I'm not saying it with any of the images that, that I looked at, um, I almost find that insulting because I want to become a part of it. It's like, you know, when you see a movie and they tell you everything mm -hmm. and then you leave and I'm like, well, it didn't leave anything. I couldn't get involved. It didn't leave anything to my imagination. How do I become a part of it? So I think an image that, uh, that draws you in 
And before you know it, you don't even know you're drawn in. And then all of a sudden you start seeing things. It's like, you know, the uh, uh, Italian and French realists, um, you know, the, the movies where there would be um, sirens off screen or lights coming into the black and white fo- um, uh, movie. So, you know, you get the feeling that there's a lot more going on and then you can interpret. So I think that's a really big thing. Composition is huge. Um, another thing that's huge for me is, and I mentioned it before, is that everything has to be in in the image for one of two reasons, which is composition or content. And if you don't do that, I mean, when I see something that, why is that? Yeah, I remember a student once, they had a great image and I said, why is there a cigarette pack in the window? Oh, I didn't see that. And I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. but you've got to, because you know we have very small space in an image. You know, it's it's small, so you have to be. It has to be deliberate, and um, also for me, it's feelings. Um, you know, and I'm I'm sure you do this too. You know, you work with a lot of students that um, they can tell the story and they can intellectualize it, but I what is the feeling? So I I want, and that's what I feel that I got with the images that I did pick, and there were a lot of others that had this too that gave me a feeling. You know, uh, you know, and in, in my case, it was transitions, but it was also my interpretation of transitions. My interpretation of transitions is different than yours. Mm-hmm. And it's great when an image will allow us to, it's kind of juicy, so you can get involved in it and then you can, you know, become a part of it. Okay, perfect. Thanks. And one, one other question from Paul. He says, um, does color or black and white make a difference? And if so, why? So we know it makes a difference, but wh- why, what's black and white versus color in terms of the choice that students have to make and how to respond differently to black and white versus color? Okay. So when I went to undergraduate school, the first thing I learned, one of the first things I learned is if you can't make it good, you make it big. If you can't make it good and big, you make it in color. So that was like, <laughs> okay, this is in the seventies. Um, but I do find that sometimes um, you know, that sometimes the images do work because of the color. Um, I prefer black and white because I think it's more interpretive. But again, I think you have to look at the image. And I think, and, and you know this with what you're teaching, Reed, is that it's about intentionality. When we're photographing, you have to have an intention. You know, it could be a feeling, it could be a thought, it could be a title. And if we don't have that, how can we... Um, how do we make pictures? So, you know, if it's sunset, well, yeah, you're probably going to want color in it because that's what makes it the sunset. So it depends on what your interpretation is, you know, what is your, what, what, and what's your intention? Because do you want something to be gritty or what's the feeling? So if it's, if, if it's pretty, you may want to have black and white you know, because they're pretty colors, they're subtle colors. And I think then it gets into the combination of the marriage between um, uh, capture and um, post-production because we take this capture. Now, you know, it's not like we, in the film days where we could just go and, you know, it, we shoot in black and white and that was it. Now we're all shooting in color. Um, and then we decide later whether we're going to do black and white and color. And I, I don't think that's really great because when we are photographing something, we have to decide, you know, because that's how we're going to compose because, and we don't really do that afterwards. So if that's an image that we want to get, well, is the drama and the black and white and the tonality something that's really going to enrich that image and your intention. So uh, I can't give you, there's no flat answer to that. Um, the thing I would do if, you know, if you're curious about it, um, either take two pictures or do it in color and do it in black and white, uh, you know, and then make it into black and white and then look to see, because when you are, you know, when you've got it onto your computer, then you can play with it. So you can back to go back to see what it is that you're looking for mm-hmm. because okay. it's intentionality. Perfect. I yeah. thank you. And Paul, thanks you. Oh, okay. <laughs> So, okay, Zach, what you got? All right. Well, first we have Marsha Guggenheim, who just wants to thank you for reviewing the pictures. She said it was very informative and lovely. So that's first. Thank you. <laughs> and then Ron, Ron Ham has a really good question. And he says, so many of your interpretations tonight reflect feelings related to COVID-19 and health-related restrictions. 
Do you think these photos will have life when seen 20, 40, 60 years from now? Absolutely. Because I think like these images, they're, they're metaphoric enough where, you know, um, I think if they're looked at 10 years from now, I don't think people would even relate it to COVID. This is just what I think is spurring. I mean, I don't know what the criteria is when they sent in the images. Um, do they have to be photographs that were taken during COVID, were taken recently? Can they been taken, you know, 10 years ago? I don't know, was there, was there any, um, how, how was that put out there? Oh, how, how was the question put out there? That was it. That was verbatim what the question was. Oh, no, what? I don't mean, I'm sorry. I mean, when, when people knew that it was about intentions, there was no like um, criteria that it had to be taken during COVID, right? Oh, no, it was just to submit an Im image that represented a transition. I apologize, right. I misunderstood. No, 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 that's okay. I probably wasn't clear. So I think that that kind of expresses it is that I feel that the images that we, you know, except for the, the one, the one that had the mask, mm -hmm. I think it was just one. Um, any of those could have been any time during transition during dark. I mean, I think for on the whole a lot had a little bit of an edge to darkness, but we also have that in life because, you know, we have happy days and we've got days that, you know, are a little bit dark. Um, so I think they have a timeless quality and they'll be interpreted differently. So I think that's a good question. And, and I, I think that that, again, is a successful image. Great, thank you. Yeah. All right, Reed. Okay, Cynthia Taft has a question. Does the title of the image help you read the intentionality of the photographer? My, my guess is the answer is it has to just because they're, they're giving you a, uh, their interpretation through those words. And maybe more so, is, is that helpful or not for you? Because you, you said you'd like to be involved in the image. And if you know too much, you can't get as intently involved. So talk about titling images, um, the strengths and, and the, the pluses and minuses of, of titling images and, um, and what they do for you as a viewer when you know the title. Yeah, um, I'm probably, I don't know that I'm a good example of it because I don't really like titles. And I have a hard time titling my images too, but I mean, I know when I go to museums, I can see an image and then I read the title and I'm like, whoa, I was really off. And, and again, I like to have an image that just gives me enough where I can tell, bring my own stories in it into it. Because I think when a title, I think some titles work really well, but I think when you're titling it, um, and I know, you know, and I, I'm not saying don't title it because when you do submit work and, you know, I, you know, I do books and every, every book that I've done has to have titles for the images. And I usually try to be like, um, you know, I do a lot of the female form, you know, in, you know, infrared in the landscape. And so I'll say, oh, you know, wood nymph or something like that. And I'll just, you know, I, I want it to be generic. Um, I don't know that I'm, you know, that's how I feel. I don't know that that's how a lot of other people feel because they do like to have titles, but, but it's like, you know, um, if I title the picture of me seeing you read, it's um, blue wool shirt, you know, sweater with dunes in the background. I mean, I don't, you know, you know, or blue and yellow. So mm -hmm. then I'm, I'm, I feel like you're directing or whoever you know, made the title is directing me to see that. Whereas, wow, what I really want, but again, I am a, uh, m to me, art is about feelings. I don't, when I start going into my headspace here and analyzing it, I make the worst pictures. And it's the same thing if I, I do do, um, I do have titles, but they're usually very metaphoric. So again, if you wanna lead um, the viewer to what it is that you are trying to say, go for words. If not, I would do something metaphoric. Or not tell it at all. Just or not tell it at all. But you know, how many untitled images can you have? <laughs> Title one, untitled two, untitled three, you know, kind of thing. Or, so um, I mean, you don't even have to put untitled one, two, or three. You just don't title it at all. I don't title any of my photographs. I just don't want to yeah. do that. Yeah. And okay, so let me be on the other side. Why don't you want to do it? because I want to leave it, I want to leave the interpretation of that image up to the viewer. And I think titles lead you down a, a road in a direction that I don't really want to do with my photographs. That's, that's really the only reason. Yep. 
And I agree. There you have it. What do you think, Zach? Not yeah, I agree. Different projects I name totally differently. I have stuff that I don't name. I have things that I name just like Lori said, where it's exactly what's just in the picture. And then I have really poetic titles on some of my projects. It depends on what I'm shooting and what I'm feeling, but I agree. It's, it's, I definitely think it does influence people. When I go to a gallery and I look at a piece of art, I always look at it first because I don't want to read it until after I look at it. Then I go read it and then I re-look at it again. So it definitely does influence me at least. Yeah, but that's a good point because you, it's, it's and, and Ron liked our, that the three of us agreed on that. So that was kind of cool. <laughs> um, so, um, you know, I think there's a, a, a time and a place for it. But again, I think that, um, it, you know, it's like catch the viewer into the image before they can get out, you know? And sometimes if the, you know, the title is there, it's like, okay, uh, you know, not that a wall's up, but um, I have to interpret it this way. So again, it's not a flat bank blanket um, uh, response. So it's gonna depend on, you know, what you're doing. So, but I, I totally, yeah. And it's, it's too, for me, it's too much work with words. If I, you know, again, if I, if I could come up with words, I would write more, but you know, I'm, you know, so. <laughs> Yeah. No. <laughs> You're a photographer, not so much a writer. No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not. Hey, Jack, you have a question? Yeah. So we got a question here from Jesse Chapman. What was the hardest thing about making your 20 selects? Oh, because I loved so many. I think there was, it was so much fun looking. Um, and, you know, just, you know, again, I, I'm sure part of it is like, to me, it was like going to a gallery because you know, I don't get out much these days. Um, so that was really nice. And um, uh, it, was just, it was just so interesting to see different interpretation and also knowing that, you know, I, I don't know where any of you guys live. Um, and it's probably all over the country, maybe even in the world. Um, and so, you know, you're, and you're bringing different, you know, every, like I'm in New England, our, what's happening in New England is different than what's happening in Texas. Um, so it made the world smaller for me. It made it approachable. It made me feel like I was connected. Um, and, um, you know, and, and again, we transition back and forth. I transition back and forth all day. Like I can be doing like high on a kite, you know, especially after teaching. And then it's just like, I plummet. You know, so it's like, I felt like I had a community, you know, I was curating a show and it was going to be up, you know, up on a, a wall um, tomorrow. And it just happened to be that it's up on a wall, you know, virtually. Um, so it, it, it may, and I think that is one of the, one of the blessings that's come out of, um, out of the virus is that um, besides that people are being more vulnerable, but we can connect. You know, like, uh, you know, I can be with Zach and Reed, you know, and it's like, this is really cool. And I didn't have to take a plane to go anywhere. Right. Um, so, you know, I think there, I, you know, no matter what, there's pros and cons. And I do feel, especially with um, photographic educators, and I, I'd love to have a conversation with you about this, Reed, one day, is that I think teaching's going to change. I mean, I think there's going to be a little bit of a hybrid where people are going to go on locations because they're they're dying to do that. But also, there's also ways to prepare before and after for it. So uh, I think I kind of got off <laughs> like I do. <laughs> uh, yeah. So one of the things that I've discovered about this online learning and teaching environment is that because we are home, we are making photographs, which are given as assignments at home uh, around people and things that are important to us. You know, it's, it's wonderful to go to Santa Fe, no question about it. And yeah. to photograph that great light and Northern New Mexico. And that's, that's part of the joy of taking a workshop in person is you, is you go to a really amazing place and you get to meet new people and that has its own value. But there's also a, a value of photographing with some more time at home. And these online classes are usually spread out. So you have a couple of days to do the assignment. And in Santa Fe, you have a couple hours to do the assignment. 
And so that's an advantage to doing an online class is that you have more time to do the assignments between classes. And you also are making photographs uh, of subject matter that probably is more important and more intimate to you because you are home in your own neighborhood with your own loved ones and your family. So another insight that has come to me in these online teaching programs, which, which I didn't know about before. So we're all learning new stuff. Mm -hmm. so, so, I mean, I know when, when we go and, you know, we're, we're doing, when I'm, when I go to um, Santa Fe and teach, um, I mean, it's amazing because we have these incredible models. We have these incredible landscapes and ranches that we go to that you guys set up for us and everything's taken care of. And it's just brilliant. And you can't not make a good picture sometimes, you know, right. and, 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 but that's, that's okay. That is great. That's why people want to go places because they, they can pull together these portfolios that are so dynamite. And I love what you just said because it's the balance of the two because now like I'm in a loft. What am I gonna shoot? There's no person. I don't have a female form here that's gonna do anything. You know, you know. So I have to go deeper. I have to work deeper. So then I think, well, when I can go back to Santa Fe, I'm going to come with a different vantage point, with different eyes, with different, you know, oh, well, maybe I'll work at a different way or a different, you know, it's, it's maybe I'll go a little deeper, you know, so I think it's, um, I, I think there's a place for both, but, right. you know, there's nothing like being in Santa Fe and shooting and doing right. a workshop. And, and our, our future is going to be both. Mm -hmm. We will be building a program for next summer and Lori will be there next summer teaching with us in Santa Fe if we all can get to Santa Fe. If you can get to Santa Fe, we don't know that, but we're going to build a program for next summer in Santa Fe. We're going to build a program for next fall in San Miguel and see what happens. But my vision for the future of Santa Fe workshops is in-person workshops in Santa Fe, in San Miguel, in Havana, uh, in India, around the world, but online programs pretty much 12 months out of the year. So we're going to offer both formats because they both have their own value and we're, we're just going to grab it and do both which is great it's really yeah. wonderful as a creative person um you know look what you've done too is that you you know a lot of people are fighting like you know this is i mean this is horrible what's going on and so it's be, it's making a lot of people immobilized and yet you've taken that creative spin like well how can we help people how can we still teach how, what are the possibilities and and look at the possibilities that that you know you've developed and it's like mind-boggling and we have communities like like the the um the internal landscape class that i taught for you that that sold out mm -hmm. oh my god i still hear from these students and they they just and this was what a three-week class right. it just bonded and now they're friends all over the world and so it makes it really small and it makes it a community and we need a community. So um, yeah, it's, it's very special. Talk a little bit about your Friday night cocktail Zoom parties. So, so, when, so when COVID happened, um, I was in uh, Chefalaya um, and uh, I just finished a workshop, came home and then everything hit, you know, and everything closed down. And I'm like, my students are freaking out. Like, you know, uh, you know, nobody, uh, are we coming to Santa Fe? What are we doing? Where are we going? You know? And I said, I don't know, but they were just, they felt like they were lost. So I said, well, I got to do something. So I started, they were all, they're all free. Um, I started a cocktail party and you were on the first one. You came to the first one, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, I just have a, uh, you know, it was a place for like-minded minded creatives to get together and talk and just be together. Um, I actually have one this Friday night with a stand-up comic. And so it's like the photographer and the stand-up comic. And, you know, how do, how do we release? How do we feel better? Because I know when I get, I can get really frustrated and I will go out and shoot and feel better because it changes our endorphins, you know? So, um, so we had it every, for, I think it was read, 14 weeks I had one every single week and I had different guests on and it was just to inspire and to have other people around because we were all going through this but it was such uncharted territory mm -hmm. and so um it's um you know and again when I've got a group that keeps you know repeating I, you know some of my um infrared classes with you I've had people take it three four times you know, know. so yeah
So it's, you know, it's a community and um, that's what, you know, I, I, I continue to do with, um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So if, yeah, if you want to come and talk sometime, that would be great. Okay, sure. Yeah. Okay, so well, I'm working on my winter session. So we'll, we'll talk about it, so. We're all desperate right now for community and, and yeah. Zoom is what we have. Yeah. It's not ideal, but it's pretty darn good for connecting people around the country and around the world. So I'm, I'm loving it as well. So Zach, do you have any, any final things you want to impart or? Um, I have a question I could ask Lori, if that's okay. Yeah, go ahead. I think it's an interesting, I've known Lori for a while now. We've worked together a lot. So if you don't want to answer this live, Lori, you don't have to. <laughs> My question for you is where do you, where do you see yourself right now in your transition? Well, so that's great because um, I've been asked to talk um, to a few groups, you know, that outside of my group, um, and I've decided um, I needed to be vulnerable um, because I don't, you know, I don't, you know, I, I everybody thinks that well, people think that you know it's really easy doing what you're doing, but it's not, you know. I've been through an awful lot to get here, you know, being a single mom raising two kids by herself, blah 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 blah, but it's like when I feel. I feel like I can be vulnerable and honest and not have that, you know, like my, you know, everything is really great and easy kind of thing. And I'm also making art that's different. You know, I, I the photograph for, um, uh, what is it? Um, Black and White Spider Awards. Yeah, you um, brought those up to me the other day. Yeah, I got, um, I submitted, I forgot that I submitted and I submitted a photograph which was, I wasn't using my big girl camera, I was using an iPhone and it was a me in a mask. And I did a, um, a composite, which I'm not really good at that kind of stuff, but you know, I just did it and I'm like, I got an honorable mention and I'm like, whoa, I am so known for infrared and the female form. And here's this image that is really, really disturbing. And I'm like, okay, well, the universe is telling me that I've got to go out on the limb and be a little more risky. So I feel that I'm going to go deeper and I'm going to start tapping into other feelings because it's always been feelings. It's always been other things, but you know, I, I photographed weddings, uh, you know, I had to support two kids. So I, and I did weddings because my marriage lasted like five years. So I was trying to get the wedding right every week. It was, you know, not really every week, it was a new couple getting married and they were in love. And so I realized that um, now it's time. We have all those other feelings that are buried inside of us, especially women. Well, I shouldn't say especially women, my generation women. So get it out. And so I think that I am going to be much bolder and tell more stories. And I also want to teach other things. You know, I'm so known for infrared, which I love. And I loved how you introduced me, Reed, because my teaching is much more than just the infrared, you know? So um, yeah, I, I think I'm just going to be bold and brave. And, you know, I'm getting to an age where if not now, when? So, um, you know, really, and it's, it's fun. And I don't, I don't really care, you know, I'm doing it for me. Mm -hmm. yeah good good <laughs> thank you laurie thanks thank zach you. well thank you Bob. a really wonderful hour i really enjoyed it and um just want to tell you a few things about things that are upcoming here at um, the workshops and our online programs we have a series called sfw perspectives and we have three upcoming in november december greg gorman is the middle of december um, november and then uh, two writers best-selling writers hampton sides and doug preston are going to present a um, perspectives on writing wild stories. And then, of course, Joyce Tennyson, the great Joyce Tennyson, is um, doing a perspectives in the middle of December, right before um, Christmas and Hanukkah. So um, tune into those. And then, most importantly, Laurie is teaching her second version of our internal landscapes um, starting January 18th. So that is now available on our website. We just put it up today. It's now live, so if you want to sign up for more of Lori Klein and her brave, courageous life, um, that can be yours too. Um, tune in to that workshop online with us um, in January, but it, it'll be it'll be full within you know probably a matter of days. So if you want to take it, I would sign up now. So thank you all for joining us. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Zach. It's been a great hour, and we'll bring this thing to a, a wrap.
And um, we'll see you probably in early January with another assignment. We won't tell you what it is right now, but there will be an assignment for over the holidays. And we will then reveal those images with one of our guest instructors who has not been named yet, but they will be um, on January 6th. So creativity continues at Santa Fe Workshops. Thank you all. Good night. And um, thank you all. Things clear up. Okay. Thanks. Bye.